Hey guys, this is Virgin here. Tiger Tag 1 2, how many call me? I don't really care. Welcome back to all tanks. Now, today I just received my Doge skin, the skin that we've gotten for participating in Wolf Tanks Classic. It was a nice little um Yeah, look back at the past. A little trip of nostalgia, but I'm also glad that it that it's done because to be fair, I cannot play that version of Wolf Tanks anymore. I'm happy that our Wolf Tanks has changed quite drastically. Some things for the better, some things for the worse. But we get this little skin to basically remind us of the good times that we had in 2011. Um, up to up to date. But what I wanted to talk about today was the challenge, the American challenge. And this time around you're able to pick up the TS-5. Now the TS-5 is basically the first American tier 8 premium tank destroyer and um, if we check the vehicle out real fast in the comparison tab, you will see that it does look quite interesting. Now we only have to find it real fast, get that in, get all the different things sorted out and there is the TS-5. It looks like an egg <laughs> to be fair um i do already own the t1 and the e4 those were my very first tier 10 tank destroyers so to be fair i don't really need a crew trainer anymore since i have unlocked all the american tank destroyers except for maybe three the t20a prototype the t25 slash 2 and the hellcat other than that i have basically every other american tank destroyers um yeah unlocked and played them very long time ago so the ts5 what do we have at our hands well it's basically a t28 that is a bit higher up um it looks like it was supposed to be the very early variant of the um a t1 e3 it has a very interesting shape it looks like um, an oval or an egg from the front, and I think it's one of the ugliest tanks I've ever seen. But on the other side, you're going to get a 120 millimeter gun, if I'm not mistaken, 120 millimeter gun. It's a tier 10 gun, which has a pretty damn good rate of fire. So out trading this vehicle, if it is in front of you is going to be quite difficult at tier 8. You can see the DPM is almost 3000. That is pretty damn good. The gun characteristics are also pretty good as well, except for dispersion or accuracy. Accuracy isn't the best. Gun depression with 5 degrees isn't the best either, but since the tank does seem to be rather low, at least the gun... Actually, no, it does sit quite high up, but 5 degrees of gun depression should still be enough. So... This vehicle is rather long. It is also rather high if we compare it to the T28 or the, um, the T95. It is a bit higher than those versions. And that is going to be quite a lot of potential to get shot from the side. You can see that right here. The vehicle is quite high. It's like the height you would expect of a T28 prototype or the T110 E3 or E4. But since it doesn't have a turret, it kind of is quite awkward. You can see the hull is basically designed to house this large gun. This gun is very large. It's basically almost the length of the of the tank. And thus, they need quite a lot of space. And it has quite a lot of armor as well. So, if we are looking at the vehicle right here, you can see it has 1,500 hit points. 260 millimeters of protection at the front. Now, I'm not sure what the lower plate here is going to be, but because of the angle, if we look at it a little bit closer, it does look quite difficult uh, to penetrate the lower plate. Um, I kind of missed the, the old T28, which had such a very, very weak lower plate that you could pen if you were at tier 8. And yeah, the, those times changed. The vehicles were overworked and they really needed a buff. And I think this one is going to fit right into the category um, of the other American tank destroyers. Yeah, it's going to be sluggish. It's going to be slow. 26 kilometers top speed. Uh, it's going to move very, very slowly. But it does 
provide you with that very nice armor at the front. Also looks quite unique. Um, looks like a blend of the T28, the E3 and the T95, but it only has two tracks. Instead of the T95 having like four tracks, it only has two tracks, which is quite interesting to see. So what do we have to do to get this vehicle? Well, there are 10 steps once more. Um, this time around, we have 10 days. Uh, so that's, I think, about four days less than we had previously. It usually was always two weeks. Um, so if you have a commitment, if you have a, a life, a job, if you have university, basically, you can forget getting this vehicle for free. But that's not what Wargaming want you to do. What they want you to do is to get a discount to maybe stage six, stage seven, get a 30% discount, and then you'll be able to get this vehicle for 60% yeah, off. Um, I'm not sure what the vehicle costs right now. I think it's just like the other bundles because you get all this stuff with it, which you don't really need, but yeah, they just add on top to make it like, expensive because it's a bundle, not just a tank. Uh, you're going to be paying, I think, about 70 bucks right now. So, yeah, 100, yeah, 100 percent discount. It's going to be free, and um, yeah, one, you know, 10 percent is going to be like seven bucks or some shit like that. That you're going to be saving off this vehicle. So, if you're a huge fan of American tank destroyers, a vehicle that does have quite a lot of frontal protection, very good DPM. Uh, but is quite sluggish and quite large. Well, this might be the vehicle for you. I mean, look at this thumbnail down here. It looks so weird. Uh, I, to be fair, don't really need it. I'm not one of those players that likes to play um, slow tank destroyers. Um, more on the side of having a game that's dynamic, fast, and uh, I much rather sacrifice armor for more mobility. So this is probably not the vehicle I'm looking forward to, but... I will probably still pick it up um, with a little bit of a discount. This time around, this challenge is also one of the easier ones um, in at least content wise, what you have to do. Um, they've made it a little bit easier. Um, if we maybe take a look at stage five uh, or stage six, this is actually where it always started to get quite difficult. Um, stage five, this time around, you have to cause 500 damage 25 times. Uh, in a tier 6 or up to tier 10 vehicle, 25 times 500 damage, that is very, very doable. That's actually no problem. That's 25 games in a row that you have to play and you're going to get this done. Now, t uh, stage 6 is going to be a little bit more difficult, on the other hand. Um, earn a total of 20,000 points of base experience. Only experience earned from being among the top 10 players. Uh, is going to be counted. So 20,000 points of base experience, that is actually doable as well. Back in the days, it was like first stage, 3,000 base experience, 4,000, uh, like no, 3,000, 5,000, uh, then like 7,000, then 10,000, then 50,000, and so on and so forth. So it was quite a long way until you were able to get through stages. Um, one two five and then it got really annoying really bearing and it felt like a grind so that is not what i think is going to be very interesting but stage seven and eight are going to be a lot more challenging from there on on because on stage seven you have to earn 500 points of base experience 25 times now base experience 500 points that usually does entail a victory that you have to achieve so winning a game 25 times in a row is going to be quite difficult. So it's probably going to be more on the side of 40 games that you'll be playing to reach this objective. You always have the opportunity to play the mission for mastery, which is set at tier 9 and tier 10. But since I don't play that much tier 9 and tier 10 at the moment, and I want to grind my tier uh, 8 and 7 vehicles to get to the next tier 9 and uh, tier 8 vehicles, I usually just do the mission for commitment. So tier eight or stage eight is actually doable. It just takes a long time, 500 HP 40 times. That's 40 games in a row. Um, and you can actually go through these quite quickly. So if you do have a lot of time on your hand, you can get a very nice amount of discount if 
you do tend to uh, invest a little bit of time. Stage nine is going to be 30,000 base experience and um, stage 10 is going to be being the top 10 uh, players on your team for damage costs, which is actually quite easy to do if we're honest. So I'm going to add some of those things up together just to give you guys a little bit of a um, of a reference for base experience that you have to earn to be able to get this vehicle for uh, for free. So basically, first stage doesn't entail any base experience. The second stage is 5, 4,500 base experience. Third stage is no base experience. Then you can see the fourth stage is already 12k base experience that you have to earn. Uh, fifth is no base experience. The sixth is 20,000 base experience, which adds up to 36,500 base experience at this moment. Uh, stage seven is probably one of the longer ones, which you have to invest quite a lot of time. Stage eight is no base experience. Stage nine is 30,000 base experience. So 30,000 base experience added on top, that's 66,500 base experience. And then you have the last mission. So you have to get 66,500 base experience in Disco. You have 10 days. This is just, I think this is one mission, two missions, three missions, four missions. Right there, that's four missions that you have to do with base experience. If you're doing the mission for commitment, that's probably going to be one or two days, depending on how much you play. Uh, it could be a little bit longer <laughs> or a lot longer, uh, but the other missions are actually quite doable. Right here, mission for commitment, earn 250 base experience uh, four times. That's four games that you have to play and that you have mission one done. Then uh, yeah, the second mission is going to take a little bit longer. Actually, the one thing is just that these base experience missions always do take the longest. So that's where they are cutting off the time this time around. And that is a quite, quite good thing to see. Uh, Wargaming are learning of the previous challenges, especially the very first challenges they did. And um, it is getting better. Now the rewards, the question is, is the reward worth it? That always depends on the person that is uh, playing on the, the, the account. But for me, it's not really that uh, alluring. I have other vehicles that I do prefer quite a lot more, but it's not that important. So, you know what? We're going to be playing a game. We're going to be playing a tier 9 version, a tier 9 tank, earn 750 points of base experience at tier 9. If we win a match and we do quite a bit of damage, we can do that in the first go. So, we're going to try that and we're going to be playing the AMX 30 prototype and uh, we're going to see if I can actually manage that. Probably not, but you might never know. <laughs> so yeah, 10 days for a challenge. They are cutting the time off more and more, but they are giving us easier missions. Now, the question now is just, what do you guys prefer more? Do you prefer more harder missions but more time or do you prefer easier missions and less time? Because the thing is, we're probably not going to be able to unlock any of those vehicles ever for, for free unless we have maybe a week. Um, a free time and absolutely nothing to do during that time but I do have the feeling that it's going to be quite difficult it never really was the purpose to get a lot of people um, a free vehicle except for the very very dedicated players but it was always the purpose of managing bringing out new premium vehicles while giving the community a chance of getting a discount on them to be able to buy them for less money. 
Now, I did manage, or I did see, that a lot of the vehicles that well, tanks or wargaming are selling are rather on the expensive kind of side. Um, a vehicle in World of Tanks costs you about at least 30 to 40 bucks if it's a tier 8. And the amount of tier 8s that they've sold, well, that is quite a lot of money that just went out for premium vehicles. Now, do you need all these premium vehicles or is it enough if you only have one premium vehicle? Yes, you don't need all of the premium vehicles. One premium vehicle is enough by far uh, or maybe two. But since I'm a tank collector, I certainly own a lot of tanks in my garage. And uh, a large or a big majority of them is on the side of being a premium or being premium vehicles. Uh, if that is good or bad, well, you tell me. It's probably not. Never was good for my wallet, but uh, yeah, it's one of the hobbies that I really spend a lot of money on. But uh, since I'm not that aggressive in spending on other places, I think it does all work out. But there's always, I mean, that is probably an interesting question. Do you guys still spend money on this game? Or have you stopped investing anything into wall tanks because you're not happy how wargaming are doing their business? Because I can totally understand both sides. Um, and I can understand why people would not want to uh, take part in the way that wargaming have dealt with certain things in the past. But I'm still, oh my God, I'm still missing this T-54 E1. That's already like the fourth time. And I don't want to catch two rounds of him. So we're gonna aim it and bounce. That is absolutely dreadful. Yeah, I don't think that we're going to be able to get the 750 base experience in this one match. Uh, probably going to be quite difficult to even get 500 base experience in this one, but... Aim for somebody else, please. We have high tools of shell loaded in, which did penetrate, but only did 400. And 46 damage, that is quite a low roll for a high explosive shell. So right there, track the object 263 in place. And that track shot is already... Nope, we do not want to have the object 263 in front of us. There we go. Maybe, maybe, if we do manage to get behind the enemy team right there and do some more damage we'll be able to get the 750 base experience that we do need there's the Udis. let's crash that little bastard there we go it's been knocked now we just have to be careful in how we play this one out because they do have quite large amount of numbers uh, let's maybe if we just cap it out it would be the best thing to do right now they do have quite a lot of HP as well also going to try to do my secondary or my main mission that I'm trying to get right now and uh, if we manage to win this game or you know, by capturing the base or by knocking off all the vehicles. We're going to get our main mission done. So we're just going to shoot the Amex 5100. This is actually a real juicy spot right now. Because you can see they have to cross over to get to us. This M103 just lost a huge chunk of HP getting over here to us. So we tracked him. He actually bounced off of us. 
Yeah, I'm not... I'm certain that we're gonna win this match. That is why I'm playing so aggressive right now. And actually, this isn't supposed to be happening with the Amex... With the... Uh, Amex prototype. You're not supposed to be bouncing shells of any kind of caliber. Right there, cheeks of the Löwe. Always been a weak spot. Always will be a weak spot. Glad for that, because heavy tanks need to have a weak spot. And I think we did manage to get our estimated goal of uh, 750 base experience that we needed. And we also got the mission for Coalition 4. Damage six different vehicles, win the match by capping or destroying all the enemy vehicles, and surviving the battle. So we're also going to get these secondary objectives. That's quite nice. That's always good to see because that's about two. No, that's actually about 350 um, K credits that I can always use. You can see right there. Base experience. I'm not sure how much base experience we just got out of that game. Uh, I think the base experience was 1,196. So we have got our very first mission. So 10% off. And I can actually show you guys how much the vehicle costs, at least the bundle, right now. And we're going to jump over and I'll show you guys in a sec. So i got to be careful that I don't show you guys anything that might just kind of eliminate any of my privacy. But no worries. So you can see the bundle right here. It costs me 65.78 Swiss francs. That's about 65 US dollar. It's almost one to one. Maybe the Swiss franc is a little bit higher. Or maybe US dollar is a little bit higher. But that's 65 bucks um, for a vehicle with all the different um, bonuses that you'll get. Like five days of premium, that's actually nothing. Uh, you don't need the premium time if you've gotten... Uh, any of the Christmas boxes previously 1.8 million credits now that is always nice but credits should never be bought in a bundle because that's a horrible uh, money to uh, kind of reward ratio then you have the um, these kind of I'm not even sure what they are they're some kind of uh, orders that you can use for um, for your equipment to make it a little bit better uh, which you can also buy with bonds. It's not very important. You don't need it, but you get it as well. That's also going to cost you quite a lot of uh, money because all of these things you don't really need. The only thing that might be quite interesting is the personal reserves of 300 experience, free XP, or 200%, you know, crew experience for two hours. That's always nice to have. But other than that, like, you can... Get all of this out. Coated optics, cut it out. Improve ventilation out. Large caliber gun, uh, tank gun rammer out. And challenge accomplished. No one needs that. So basically, it would be great if you were able to just buy the vehicle off. You know, reduce the price. Maybe, I don't know, get a 5% discount for the vehicle itself. And uh, that would kind of make it a little bit better in my opinion. I think they can still work on the bundle. Uh, to make it a bit more fair for the consumer, but still, it's a great way to get yourself a vehicle off in uh, for less money. But the bundle kind of does eliminate the real amount of money you will be saving. So that's kind of the problem with this. I always don't like bundles. Bundles are not good because they force your hand. And they force your hand in this game very, very much because they always like to sell you bundles, which consists of a lot of really bad things. At least this time around, you have a Brothers in Arms crew with zero perks, um, which is nice. Brothers in Arms and American Tanks doesn't happen quite a lot. But since I have all the American Tanks, it's not important. I'm going to cut this video right now because it's getting too long. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Hope you did enjoy. As always like, comment, subscribe, and tell me what you guys think of the PS5. And I'll see you guys on the next one.